Hey everybody, I sure hope you like your story about a thunderstorm, just a thunderstorm by Gina and Mercer Mayer. It's a fun story to read um, to help kids when they're afraid when storms come. And since it's springtime, we'll know we're going to get lots of thunderstorms. So I also thought, why don't we make a fun craft with these kids um, to help them anticipate and be ready for it when the storms come. And I found one that I thought was fun to make. We're going to make a little thunderstorm luminary. And um, a luminary, of course, is something that glows um, in the dark. And um, let me quick go get the light a second so you can see what that looks like better. You can see how that glows in the dark. And to make that, it's not that complicated. All we're going to need is a clear plastic cup. Um, some tissue paper in blue and yellow oops, and white that you've cut into squares or you can um, purchase them pre-cut. That's what my yellow and white ones are. My blue ones, I just cut out some regular tissue paper into squares. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you're going to need a Sharpie marker and you're going to need some cotton balls and some glue. And the first thing you're going to want to have your child do is draw lightning bolts on their cup. And you want to make them so they're blocky. And lightning bolts are just like Z's. And you want to make them kind of blocky and kind of um, thick shaped because we're going to be gluing tissue paper behind them. And you want to um, put them all around your cup so that you have um, a variety of lightning bolts. And you can be as creative with them as you like, have as many or as few as you like. Maybe you would like to have um, some bursts of light, which is what we did with our um, circles here and the white here. And all I did with that was I drew a circle with lots of little rectangles around it. Looks kind of like a sun, but they're gonna be more like flashes of white light when your luminary is lit. Like that. So when you have your cup decorated as you'd like, you can have as much or as little as you'd like. Maybe you have a really rough thunderstorm going on, like a hurricane going on, or maybe you have just a gentle uh, spring storm, however you'd like to do it. Then you're gonna have to take your glue, and this is where it's gonna get messy. So for kids that don't like to get messy, you might wanna use Q-tips or maybe a toothbrush that you're not gonna use anymore. Um, kids that like to use their fingers will love this part. But you want to put the glue on over your bolts of lightning on the inside of the cup. And then you want to take your yellow tissue paper and you want to place it over the glue. Just like that. So it looks like that on the outside of the cup. And on the inside of the cup, you can see it's laying flat on there. We're going to go to this one and rotate the cup. And we'll go to this one. Oops, I have two pieces of tissue paper on there. And on this one, if your lightning bolts are really big, you may need to use two pieces of tissue paper, and that's okay too. And then on my little white, or on my little sunburst here, we're gonna put a little bit of glue there, and we're just gonna put some white tissue paper on top of that. In fact, mine is kind of big, so I might use two pieces of white tissue paper to cover that. Now, what about the rest of the cup? What are we gonna do with that? Well, now we have to put more glue on there. So you need to put glue on the inside of your cup. And again, you can smear it around with a Q-tip, with your finger, with a um, toothbrush, however you like. Um, if you've got a big enough glue bottle like I do, you can just smear it on the inside like so. And now we're gonna cover it with blue tissue paper all over where we don't have it covered with the cut with the yellow and the white tissue paper. You want to try to make sure you don't cover up your yellow and white tissue paper because you need to make sure that the light can shine through it. And if you need to add more glue as you go, that's fine. And you just want to cover the inside of the cup completely with the blue tissue paper. That gives it that nice dark stormy night sky look that we're looking for. And put another big piece here. And they're sticking to me. 
that's okay too. And then when you get down to the bottom, um, you can just lay them on the bottom of the cup also. You might want to drop some glue into the bottom of the cup like that. And then you can lay your tissue paper on the bottom of the cup also just like that. And we're almost got this all filled and covered. Oops. It does get a little sticky and messy, so make sure you've got paper towels handy so you can clean up when you're done. And come along all around the edges. And so when you've got it completely covered, I'm not quite done covering all mine yet, but when you get it completely covered, like we did in this one, then you want to make the clouds that are going to sit on top. And again, you just want to run some glue around the top of the cup now, like that. And take your cotton balls, and you want to stretch them out to make them kind of poofy. And then just lay them on top of your cup. Nice and poofy. And I think I used two or three on my last one. If you want really, really big storm clouds, you can add as many as you like and make your clouds on top. And then the only other thing that you need is a candle. Please do not use a real candle. A real candle will melt your plastic cup and cause a fire. So please do not use a real candle. You want to use um, these battery operated tea lights. They are available at craft stores, at Walmart, at Target. Um, some people have them just for um, decorative purposes. And then um, you want to turn it on. There's a little switch on the back here for you to turn it on and off with. There's the off, there's the on, and then you can put it under your luminary and it will flicker. And your kids might enjoy watching the lightning in their storm. And that's how to make that craft. But you might say to me, but you know what? We're not supposed to leave our houses and I don't have white or clear plastic cups and I don't have um, electric battery operated candles, so I can't make that craft. And I thought that that was kind of sad because I really wanted to do a fun craft with your kids today. So I came up with a secondary craft that you should have everything to do with at home. And that's this one. This is what we call a mixed media art project. And all you're going to need to do this project with is some watercolor paints, um, some markers. Um, you're going to need a, a cupcake liner. This is a miniature cupcake liner, but you can also use the regular size cupcake liners if that's what you have at home. Um, you're going to need scissors and a pencil. And of course, you need a picture of your child. And you can just run outside with your kids and have them goof off and dance and play like I did. And then um, load it up to your computer and print that picture off. You don't have to run and get a regular picture. But if you've got pictures laying around that you don't mind cutting up, you can use that too. So how do we make this mixed media art picture? Well, you need to get your paper that you're going to paint. Um, you can use construction paper. If you've got art paper, you can use that. Um, and then you have your child paint. Every kid likes to paint, right? And you want to, looks like my daughter was painting the purple paint here. Um, you want to rinse your, your brush off really good and get it wet. And then you want to get it wet with green because you're going to paint the grass. And I gave mine a hilly texture. And that's entirely up to you if you want to do a hilly texture or not. And then you just want them to paint. And the beautiful thing about watercolor paint is that half of it is just water. So you don't need a lot of the actual color. You can just keep adding water to your paper, which is why you're going to want a thicker paper than computer paper. Although if that's all you have, you can certainly use that. And you can just keep swirling it around and spreading that water. The color will bleed with it. The more water you add, the lighter it, it gets. And as it dries, it'll give a nice blended texture together. If you want it darker to stimulate um, distance, then put your darker colors at the top. Um, and then your lighter colors at the bottom. So you won't need a ton of paint here, although you have a large surface. Again, if you want to protect your tabletop, I highly recommend putting down newspaper or something because these are watercolors. They do wipe up really easy with just a wet paper towel. 
um, so it's not too damaging to your tabletop surfaces. Um, but if you've got newsprint, I really recommend you put that down. Um, it just makes cleanup a little bit easier and it will help absorb some of the water on your paper um, as your paper dries. So you can kind of see how I'm just adding water here to my green and I'm swirling and spinning. Let your kids have fun and be creative. They can add as much or as little water as they want. Um, they can decorate their, their paper any way they want um, to get it um, to look like a field. Okay, now we're gonna do the sky. The sky we've gotta kinda make stormy, right? Cause it's supposed to be a storm cloud. So we're gonna try to make it more dark. And again, we're just gonna put some blue on here, some splashes, and then we're gonna add our water to it because that really helps spread that color around. And we're gonna keep stirring here. Be a little bit careful as you come to the green so you don't blend it together. Um, this is a good opportunity to teach your kids about how colors do blend, how you can add um, yellow and blue to get green, how you can add red and blue to get purple, and how you can add red and yellow to make orange. So if you guys are having fun with paint, um, especially if it is a rainy day, that's a really good opportunity to teach them about color blending, and then when you add the water to color shading, how to make things look um, like they're off in the distance or close up. Even your preschoolers can appreciate um, perspective on their paintings. Okay, so we're kind of getting our, cloud, our, our sky in here. Again, your preschooler doesn't have to color the whole paper. They may certainly do as much as little as they like. We all know about attention span. But I'm 46, so we're gonna go ahead and do the whole page. And we've got all this together here. Oops, see, I got some green in my sky. That's okay too, because sometimes when you have a green sky, that means really bad weather is coming. And if any of you have ever lived in Tornado Alley, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You really want to make sure if you can get them to swirl the paintbrush here in the top, that kind of makes it look like the sky is disturbed, that it's unhappy, things are going on, going to happen up here. And now we've got it all blue. Now we're going to add some other colors to it to give it some darkness to make it kind of stormy, because why else would you need an umbrella? All right, so we're going to add a little bit of purple in here. And we're going to blend all that together with a little bit more water. That darkens up the sky quite a bit. A little bit of blue in here. Make it more dark. And some more water. And we're going to keep swirling it. And we're going to add a little bit even of black in here. Because we really want that sky to get dark and stormy looking. But we just keep adding the water so that it blends it all the way through. We don't want it too black because then it might look like a night sky. If you have too much water on here and you don't like it, just take a paper towel or a Q-tip and blot it up. So if your little artist is, is a perfectionist and they don't like their sky, you can alter the colors that way too. Now, I do not have a degree in art major. This is just what I learned through trial and error and having fun with paints with our own kids over the years. Okay, so now we've really got kind of a stormy dark sky going on here. It's looking kind of, kind of stormy, kind of dark. All right. Yeah, a little bit more water in here. And now we got some bubbles going on. Those dry really cool looking. And we'll add a little more swirls here to kind of look like we've got some kind of cloud going on. Okay. And now the hard part is letting it dry. We have to let it come completely dry um, before we can do the next part of our drawing. So this would be a good time to go outside and play with your kids and take a picture of them and then come inside and play around with it to get it printed off. And once you do that, then all you have to do is cut the picture out. And I have one of my daughter here. And we're just going to want to cut along the outline of their body. If you, got, if you want to do this for a couple of kids as a memory of what you guys did during the quarantine of COVID-19, it'd be kind of cute to have a whole bunch of kids running around with um, paper umbrellas in the rain. And we'll cut out along her arm. If you have a little bit of the background showing, that's fine. If you're cutting out a real picture, that's fine. It doesn't matter if it's 
glossy or matte finish. Um, I just didn't have any uh, photograph paper in my printer when we printed this off, so we just printed it off on regular paper. But I have done this project before with an actual picture. It turned out really cool, um, especially because the picture I chose actually was glossy, and so it really popped on the paper when we glued it. And finish cutting along the edges here. Try not to cut the child's head off or an appendage. But if you do, that's okay. We have glue and we can put it back on for the painting. I would recommend that parents do this part of the project. Although if your kids really like to cut and think they can do it, why not? Let them go for it. It's really good eye-hand coordination and scissors practice to come all the way around their body parts and get them all cut out, especially on some of these like where it's around their feet and their legs. Um, depending on the pose that you have them in. All right, so there we have my daughter's here like this. And we can go ahead and place her on the paper. My paper's not quite dry yet. Um, but we could put her like right about here or we could pose her up here running through. Um, kind of gives you some time to figure out where we want to put her. And then we're going to want to pick out an umbrella for her. And I could use a mini um, cupcake tin or, we, or liner, or we can use a large one. And I might use a large one with this one. And to do this, all we want to do is flatten your cupcake liner in half like that and then make sure you pop it up so it's like a half like a half a liner like that so fold it on itself and then you're going to run a line of glue right along the edges here when you put it on your paper so if we were going to line her up on here like this I'd want her umbrella sitting right about oops, right about here like so, and then we glue it on there, but I have to wait for my drawing to dry. And then you're gonna take your black Sharpie marker, and you're going to draw an umbrella line from the center of your cupcake liner to a hand, and then make sure you hook it. As you can see in the drawing that I did on this one, we hit a hook there, and then I even drew lines inside the cupcake liner to show that the umbrella was open. When my painting was really good and dry, we also added markering to the grass. We put in some tufts of grass, we put in some flowers, I even added a mud puddle that she was stepping in. Let your child's creativity be your guide as to how you want to draw your picture here. I would really love to see your artwork when you get it all done. Oops. And try not to spill and make a mess like I did. And. Um, so if you'd like to share it on my Facebook page or send us pictures to Her Memorial Library, we'd love to take a look at it. I appreciate you guys watching us, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Have a good evening, and don't be afraid of those thunderstorms. They're just air masses booming against each other and making beautiful pictures of light and sound in the sky. See you guys later. Bye-bye.